Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to have a look at um, how we study bacteria in a lab. Now, first of all, why would we want to study bacteria in a lab? Well, bacteria, of course, are pathogens. Some of them are pathogens which are harmful to us. Some of them aren't. We do need some of them, but some of them are. And so we need to study how they work, how they reproduce, what can kill them, and then we can produce medicines in order to help us. Okay. So if we have a look over here, here we go. This is a bacterium. Bacterium. There we go. So this is a this is a cell um, of a bacterium, and if we have loads of these, so we have loads of these guys together. This is what's known as a culture. So a culture just means a group of the same thing. So we've got loads of these bacteria together. This is known as a culture. So when we refer to growing a culture of bacteria, it just means we're growing a load of the same bacteria. Okay, now in the lab, the thing that we actually grow them in is known as a Petri dish. So this here is called a Petri dish. Now these are normally made of plastic, sometimes they can be made of glass, but what's very important is that they are sterile. Sterile. And we can sterilize them using uh, different machinery. For plastics we can also use things like gamma rays or UV and we can therefore sterilize the petri dish. This is important because we don't want contamination. So contamination is when you have other microorganisms growing in the same place. So that might look something like this. So you see I've now got this green bacteria which is clearly a different bacteria. If he sits inside this culture here, that is now contaminated because we have more than one different kind of microorganism. So this would be a contamination. So we move him out of the way. Now this orange stuff here is agar or agar jelly, as it's often called. And the agar jelly is what's known as the growth medium. The growth medium. And that basically means it is a substance which almost acts like the food for the bacteria. So we put the bacteria onto the growth medium and they can grow because it's full of nutrients which they need to survive. So we need to do that so that we can have the bacteria growing and surviving Whereas if we didn't have enough nutrients in there, they would eventually die. So we need that as well. Now the agar also needs to be sterilised. Pretty much everything that we're going to use has to be sterile. And in general, the technique is known as aseptic technique. Aseptic. Whereas septic is going to mean infected or prone to infection. Aseptic technique is what we use in the lab, and this ensures that we don't get contamination. And so sterilizing things and taking extra care ensures that we are following aseptic technique. Okay, and how are we going to get the bacteria onto the agar jelly? We are going to use something which looks like this. And this is just known as an inoculating loop. Inoculating loop and this is used so we put the loop into our bacteria and then we basically swipe the inoculating loop over the jelly and that transfers the bacteria onto the jelly and of course we need to sterilize this as well and the way we're going to do that is by using one of these things which is known as a Bunsen burner Bunsen burner Okay, now before I go on to the process, why is it that we need to take all these precautions? Because in a lab, normally, we will use bacteria which has been attenuated, we say. It just means that the bacteria is not actually very harmful. And so then why do we need all this aseptic technique? The reason is that bacteria can mutate very fast. So mutation in bacteria is very fast. So very fast. What that means is that even though we have a harmless bacteria, we don't know whether it could mutate and become harmful while we're working with it. And we'd have no way of knowing until we 
got it on our hands and we transferred it maybe by eating into our mouths and then you know we're in a lot of trouble so the way we avoid that is using aseptic technique we stop the bacteria from being able to get obviously onto our hands and into our mouth we ensure that everything is sterile to stop any other harmful bacteria from growing with it and obviously the things we use like gloves and everything else stops us from um, putting ourselves at risk okay so I think that's enough about the equipment we need and how we carry it out so let's have a look at the process itself okay so here we have all our equipment we have our sterile beaker of hot agar and what we're going to do is we just pour that onto our petri dish there we go and now we have our agar on our plate we let that settle and obviously it solidifies into the agar jelly now what we do is we want to take our bacteria so we actually physically have a test tube containing that bacteria in real life we wouldn't see the cells because they're so small it just looked like a liquid okay best to do the inoculating loop in a different color so we take our inoculating loop and we bring it up here and we put it in and out of the Bunsen flame to sterilize the loop okay perfect that ensures that there's no other bacteria on it we then take it to our bacteria and we dip it in so that we have bacteria that we want on the loop okay we then take the loop and we streak the agar jelly in diagonal lines like this the so diagonal lines going across all the way across the agar jelly and stopping on the other side which means you would have ended up with something that looks a bit like that without the crossover there but there you go a bit like that so that's what we'll see now before we do that the lid is on this agar plate uh, to stop contamination and then immediately after doing this we replace the lid again and then we tape up the agar plate so this is an awful drawing of tape but this is just showing you that we have sealed the agar plate and that stops whatever's in the agar plate getting out and anything from the air getting in and so we tape it up and then we incubate it so we incubate all that means is we store it in sort of like a fridge but at a given temperature now this will normally be 25 degrees C 25 degrees C in a normal lab the reason being is because this stops uncontrollable growth and often it stops pathogens from growing because if we grew at 37 degrees C this is the ideal temperature for growth and it means that pathogens could grow as well so pathogens could grow at 37 degrees C and so to be safe we use 25 and so you leave the plate for however long normally uh, overnight will do it and then you come back to it and what you might see are dots on the plate and they might not normally be purple but let's just say for example in this case they are you will see dots on the plate like so which actually represent your bacteria so these guys if you make them really 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 small and put millions of them in the same place will end up forming these things and these spots are known as colonies colonies just like you know when you have a group of people living together separate from other people you can call that a colony these colonies are the separate populations of the bacteria that we have growing and so we could say that this is a colony here this is an individual colony and that's the difference between a colony and a culture the culture will be the whole lot okay and that is basically how we grow bacteria so we are going to look in the next video at different things we can do to study bacteria so we can add antibiotics to the growth medium and that will obviously tell us a lot about the bacteria but this is how we grow bacteria in a lab if you do have any questions please do use the link below to send me an email or comment and I'll be sure to get back to you but I look forward to seeing you in the next video